Hey, hey, hey. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bubble Tea's Gaming. And uh, this video might be promoted globally in game. So this uh, might be my big break. Ooh, I can finally coin harder like Bruce Willis in Coin Harder 4. So if you don't know me, my name is uh, Bubble Tees, I'm one of the chroniclers and uh, I'm here to be giving you some tips and tricks for Siege of Winterfell. Okay, just FYI, my video are normally very low uh, like editing content, means I don't edit much and uh, usually it's a very uh, crappy display. But I like to think that uh, if you watch my other videos, it's usually more content driven. Okay, so uh, I played the Siege of Winterfell and uh, reception is, is very, very positive. Uh, me and my alliance had a lot of fun. And due to my short collar shattered hand telling me not to release our in-depth strategy, I will give you guys a very basic info on the tips and tricks. So the first tip and trick is uh, I wanted to share with you guys is the magic button on the side, like this button. So if you notice that if while you're playing the game, you can't actually go to your toolbar. So if you do this, you can move freely. Uh, I have no idea why is this even a feature, but it's just good to know. So basically you have uh, in the in the Siege of Winterfell, if you played it, you know you have three deployment. That's one, two, uh, one, two, three. And if you press your keyboard, one, two, three, you will get the corresponding deployment. And the additional uh, tip is the button beside the one. Let me show you. Notepad 2020. Boop. This button. It when you press this button, it automatically selects all three deployment. Okay. So for Siege of Winterfell, uh, after trying it out, your lot actually matters though. So, uh, let me see. Let, let me quit. So before you go into the thing, uh, do everything you're supposed to, but do not on your army size. This is not AC. Army size doesn't increase it. Uh, on your total attack, get into fervor, capture a lot, make sure you have Hall of Faces. Hall of Faces is actually really important for this because it gives you marching speed of 21%. Okay, additional tip. Your, your current lot must be one of these that is taken into the game. Or, or in your deployment though. So if it's not in your deployment, you realize your stats is very, very uh, low. Uh, let me show you uh, what I mean. So, for example, uh, I think Sag was my lord. Let's see, give me a minute. So as you can see, my total attack and stuff uh, was, uh, Sag was my lord and it actually helped when I PvP. And with, without lot, it's drastically different. And keep in mind though, like your infantry actually gets buffed a ridiculous amount because they don't add your normal commander uh, special skills. They add the commander uh, bonus. So look at this, Chris adds 150 instead of 30 for this event. Okay, so FYI, this event uh, stats actually do not play a huge part though. Because if you notice, see, you are still able to get a good chunk of the damage if you have uh, greater stats and stuff, but it's not that game breaking though. So if a person has like uh, better stats, it can chip you, but you also can chip the person. So it's not really like AC whereby you lose a lot because this is individually... Uh, uh, attacking the stats play a huge part but it's not a game breaking though so always remember to have your lot as one of the lots and in your deployment to get the uh, bonus i've seen a lot of people never take any of their lot and put in their deployment causing their troop stats to be really really low okay so uh before i go i wanna say uh, i wanna teach you guys the macro chip uh, macro aspects of the game because this is what i found out uh, I play a lot of uh, League of Legends, Dota, and uh, World of Warcraft in the past. So, my three deployments, usually one will be full calf, infantry, and spear. And the calf, uh, and the infantry and spear will have two healers, but my calf will not have healers. So, a good idea would be to send your calf your, to get damage first, and you kite them back 
and you go around your infantry and spear. So as uh, while they're chasing your calf, cause they think they're about to kill it, your infantry and spear can do damage. And always keep your lord sack either in your infantry or spear. So uh, if you guys want to know what I mean, it's simply called kiting or uh, movement advantage. It's very common in games like Starcraft and uh, Dota whereby you move hit, move hit, move hit. It's actually fun to do in this game though because people will chase uh, your calf and you will always have the chance to uh, circle around. Uh, sorry guys, I cannot show you any game footage of me actually doing it because uh, my alliance uh, said hold back. We actually have a decent shot of winning. So... So, but you, you should try, definitely try the macro thing out. The kiting. Just uh, YouTube kiting though. I wish I could show you, but like it's quite hard because I don't have footage of the game. And one more thing I highly recommend. When you go into the event, uh, always get... Wait, uh, change. This uh, shell and this sword. Reason being because they're the only thing that has marching speed unless you're going for purple glorious. So I actually would, so for the next uh, round, I would actually advise, uh, I would put my lord as my calf as so as I to kite more efficiently due to they have the increased marching speed though. These are very minor details that you can try to adjust to get the maximum benefit. Okay, so I did a reverse engineering whereby I showed you the macro stuff and now I'm going to show you the micro stuff. No, micro, macro, micro. Uh, I show you the small details. Now I'm gonna show you the big details. Jesus Christ! Okay, okay. So, uh, sorry guys, this is an uh, image is very blur. The tip I just uh, corresponded. So, uh, the deployment wise, right? I always, unless you're giving a specific role in your alliance, your three deployments should always walk together, and you should always use uh, one of your deployments to trick and kite so that your other two deployments can attack. So this is one of them. So in the beginning, uh, in your alliance, you should you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten objective though. So uh, I've seen a lot of the high level alliance, and basically they're all doing the same thing. They split into two groups and corner left and right. So uh, this event is more about coordinating your your troops allocation. So. 50% will go to the right and left and they will take the two objectives and move forward and uh, Bannerman will go secure the spring for the healing and the uh, people will go into the middle to fight for the Winterfell objective so that they can transport for additional points. The points and stuff uh, matter and so it's about having allocation so your alliance can decide that you want to you favor more of the spring to the other objective though so they can allocate 70% to the right and very little to the left and a good note would be to give your alliance member indication for example uh, L1, L2, L3, L4 then the R1, L2, like signal which is the objective that you're going for so in this game it's very important to have two scouts so the scouts job is to basically uh, send out uh, their marches or look at the map and look at where the opponent is going to allocate troops for so and fighting and you when you see them coming you should shout out call and you say you need help and allocate troops accordingly so people should always position themselves if you're playing the back you should position yourself closer in between uh, L1, L2, L, uh, R1, R2, that middle here, so you can uh, optimally reinforce. If you're playing more aggressively and you're steamrolling, you can position it into L3 and R3 uh, in the middle, so you can automatically fall back. And fighting for the objective, if you have the objective, it's always uh, good to put your three deployment at the outermost circle, so that while you're fighting, you're actually capping points. Or capping the objective or holding the objective and another tricky thing if you are like me and you're able to scout the map optimally I will look for uh, objective that has no one inside and I'll send my calf deployment to there and hold the objective to force them to answer answer one of my troops and if three or four come I will push it back get it very low damage and back to my main uh, two troops hiding nearby and we will start uh, circle kiting and attacking. 
So, uh, basically, let me give me a minute. Let me. So this is how you play the siege of Winterfell, though. Like, uh, this is just the beginning, though. So I figured that more uh people will start finding out strategies, and it's all about troop allocation. So have a good scout, know when the enemy is coming, and position your troops optimally to uh defend objective, though. And when fighting, it involves uh, it boils down to who kites better. And your three deployment will should optimally be spear, infantry, and calf, so that uh when the guys uh when three are attacking one deployment, you should always have one troop that counters to deal the max damage. And another hidden tip which my alliance will kill me is that you must coordinate the same target. So if for example if everyone uh for example if I am the bannerman defending the spring, I will say go on Salsa Dancer any commander, then everyone or in the spring will click on any uh that particular troop and will start DPSing down. This is much more effective than uh you guys attacking individually. So this event is actually highly fun. I hope I gave you some uh tips and tricks though. So like if uh I can't say too much, I already said too much that my alliance will kill me. So always move as a group. Uh, optimal troop allocation. Have someone doing the scout. Make sure your lord is one of the commanders in your deployment. Get all your marching speed, and you and this game is still early. It's just the first preview, and people are really brainstorming. I'm having a lot of fun though. It was like a, a fun in my alliance just uh hearing the stuff and stuff. Hearing and everyone having fun. And we face red though. Those people, half of them are StarCraft Master League pros though. Ooh, kudos man. So work on your macro and I haven't played enough but I'm gonna test out more of my theories. But I figured that this event is so fun that I'm not rushing to break it though. I'm just rushing to have fun. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed some of my tips and tricks. And if you're checking me out for the first time, uh, please feel free to look at my other videos though, uh, like, and give me feedback on my content. Uh, love you guys so much. Thanks for checking me out. Bye.